Welcome back to The Trevor Bauer Show. This week's episode is brought to you by Momentum, your premier destination for player-driven MLB content. Momentum exists to connect fans and players on a human level, and they do that by providing unparalleled, behind-the-scenes access to the best personalities across the league. Look, I'm in the clubhouse every single day, and it's a quirky, entertaining, and hilarious environment for vibrant personalities. So you deserve to see that side of your favorite players, too. If you haven't already, do yourself a favor. Go on over to youtube.com, search Momentum, and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the best baseball content out there. Join the Momentum family today. And with that, we got some baseball updates because there's been a lot of stuff going on. Let's start, uh, we got to start with Joe Kelly. Let's start with Joe Kelly. Uh, I got some thoughts on this whole situation. One, the obvious, <sighs> eight games, out of 60 is not eight games out of 162. It's, it's like 22 games out of 162, right? I know a lot of fans have been saying that. First off, the penalties for fines and for suspensions and stuff like that, those were agreed upon. It was, it was agreed upon that they would be the same number of games, not the number of games relative to the number of games we're playing. So if eight games would be the normal suspension in 162 game season, then eight games is going to be the same suspension now. Just like if you got caught with PEDs, you wouldn't serve 30-game suspension. You would serve an 82-game suspension, so you'd miss the entire season. Uh, so that's, that's been agreed upon. So for all the fans that are saying, oh, eight games is a lot out of what? It's like 22 games. That's not the right argument, all right? That's not the argument you should be making. The argument you should be making is, is eight games the right number of games? Should he be suspended at all or should he not? Should it be three games? Like what? How egregious was this act that he should be suspended for or not suspended for? All right. I got to... It is never okay to throw at someone's head. So I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it is never okay to throw at someone's head. If you're going to hit someone, this is generally how it goes, all right? You're going to go hit someone. Someone's done something to your team, so you decide, okay, the umpires are not taking care of this. The league isn't taking care of this. My my guys are in danger or being harmed in some way, so I'm going to go out there and send a little bit of a message. All right? You maybe throw a first pitch breaking ball. Maybe it's the first pitch at the at-bat. There's some ways to disguise it, and then all of a sudden, you stick one in the guy's ribs or the butt, the back. You never go above the armpit, and generally speaking, you're not going below the knee, so you're going somewhere in the core of the body. All right? That's Generally speaking, the way it's happened, I've intentionally had to hit, I've had to hit a couple of guys intentionally over my career. There's been some egregious things that have gone on. I think I have one guy in the knee and one guy in the, in the mid back. All right. That's, that's how you do it. You don't go at someone's head. There's no place in baseball for throwing a 99 mile an hour fastball or a 90 mile an hour, any pitch at someone's head, in my opinion. All right. It's people's lives are on the line. You get hit in the head. You have seriously like life changing injuries. You get hit in the face, break, but like there's a lot of stuff that can go on that just, Man, nothing, nothing is worth, like, nothing is worth that. Nothing on the baseball field is worth that uh, to me. So that's the first thing on it. Don't throw at someone's head. Now, is it intentional or not? <sighs> well, MLB certainly thought it was, all right? And I think they're the, really the ones who messed this up. They came out and they said that, Given the prior history of throwing at someone, given the, ta given the taunting after the, the career at bat, the strikeout, uh, it was deemed intentional, and for that behavior, he was going to get an eight-game suspension. I don't think they had to do that. I, I think that just detracts from their argument. Because like, when you start talking about prior history, like, are, are, are we sure that prior history means that now uh, the, the intent is the exact same, that... that because he threw at someone before or was deemed to have thrown at someone before, now he for sure threw at someone. Like, it just seems like a weak argument. Like, you can't, how do you prove that something that happened before has definitely now happened again? Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is, like, the taunting. I mean, that wasn't a bet. He threw a breaking ball up by Correa's head. It was 87 miles an hour as a breaking ball. Now, you can say that maybe he was trying to throw a breaking ball up, like to disguise it into not, I, whatever, right? It's a breaking ball. It's so hard to say on a breaking ball that there's intent there. Guys lose breaking balls up and arm side all the time. I throw curveballs up and arm side all the time. Would they be up by a right-handed hitter's head? Yeah, they would be. Am I intentionally trying to throw a curveball at a right-handed hitter's head? No. So I think it's hard to say, and then you start, you start talking about the taunting, and it's like, well, he struck him out, 
and there's definitely bad blood between the two teams, obviously. So he strikes him out and he says something. Have I said something to hitters when I've struck him out before? Absolutely. Like it's, it's in the moment of competition. Like you strike him out and you're like, you know, I guess the wording here, the supposed wording was nice swing, bitch. Uh, is that out of line for what's normally said on a baseball field? No, it's not. Um, was it out of line in this situation given the circumstances? No, it wasn't. I don't think so. I, I think it's hard pressed to find the, the initial comment, the comment itself. We're not talking about throwing at people here. We're talking about the comment itself. Was the comment itself out of, out of bounds? No, it wasn't. I, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that says the comment itself was out of bounds. So now when MLB starts talking about the reasons for the suspension and you start saying taunting, that, that's normal. Like, it just blew up because the two teams in the situation so if you're going to suspend the guy, then just come out with your best argument and just say, we deem that the 3-0 pitch to Alex Bregman was intentional and for throwing at someone's head, there is uh, there's a penalty, a severe penalty, and you're suspended eight games. Done. But then, then there's going to be the appeal process and then it can get figured out whether it was intentional or not. But like when you start making these arguments about all oh, the, the taunting and the, the prior history, it's just like, God, that's so weak. Just say that you deemed it intentional and that you're suspended. That's all you got to say. Um, do I think it was intentional? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I, it's going to be argued no on one side of the fence and yes on the other side of the fence. I don't know where I come down on that. I don't know Joe at all. I don't know the temperament. I don't know what was being discussed. Did Dave Roberts tell him to go hit someone? I don't think so. It, I, I do not think so. I don't think that happens. So Dave Roberts getting suspended for one game. I get it. Uh, you're responsible for your team. you got to control your team. I get that. Does Dave Roberts deserve to be suspended in this situation? No. In my opinion, no. I don't think so. Um, there's no way that in that close of a game, especially in a season that's 60 games, where every game is so meaningful, that you tell a reliever to go out and hit someone. I, I just, it's, it's not, it doesn't make sense to me. So I don't think Dave Roberts should be suspended. I think Kelly should be suspended for a couple games. I don't think eight games is the right number. He didn't even hit anybody, but I do think, I mean, just looking at, looking at it and, I mean, I, I, think, I think it's a couple game suspension personally. Now, I don't know the situation. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Like, I don't know any of that stuff. So I'm in no place to opine about it and to, to give a, a definitive opinion. But in my opinion, I think that I think he should be suspended for a couple games. I would give him a three to four game suspension. That's what I, if I were the commissioner, which I'm not, that's what I would do. And I also don't know the facts, so it's hard for me to say that that's what, that that's what I would do without knowing all the facts. But... A lot of people have been asking, so that's what I think of that. Um, now, let's talk about the optics like for baseball. Setting aside the danger of throwing at someone's head, setting aside the, the bench clearing brawls and all this. What a good moment for baseball. What a good moment for baseball. I mean, that is, that's what the sport needs more of is drama like that between two teams, rivalries, two players, a group of players, another group of players, like that's what makes it compelling is the drama. Not, not th don't get it mistaken, don't take it out of context here. I'm not talking about throwing at people that baseball needs more of that, but the drama, the player to player drama, the stare downs, the intimidation, the bat flips, the, like that creates drama, that creates interest and baseball needs that. Baseball needs more of that. So. I was happy to see that. Everybody's talking about it. It's a good thing for baseball. It reminds me a lot of the Tim Anderson thing from last year or a couple years ago. He bat flips and everybody's talking about it. And Tim did a great job leaning right into that and saying, I'm going to continue to do it. Did a great job. It went on for like a week. Baseball needs that. In the World Series, Bregman carries his bat to first. Soto hits a home run, carries his bat to first. Drama, interest, storylines. Great, everyone's talking about it. What happens next? Guys come out, oh, I'm sorry, I, this and that, I shouldn't have done it, it won't happen again, blah, blah, blah. Done, over, storyline gone. Killed it. Instead of leaning into it. 
How much more compelling is that World Series if Bregman comes out and says, I'm not sorry, I'm going to do it again next time I hit a homer. And Soto goes, yeah, it looked fun. I'm going to do it again if I hit a homer. And then you have this back and forth and like now other players are in on it. And then you have comments in the media. Then you have like how much more interesting would it have been? Like, I mean, it was already a great World Series. It was already super interesting. But how much more drama would there have been? How much more intrigue? How many more people would tune in to see like, oh, what's going to – the theater of it all. What's going to happen today? So I, baseball needs this type of stuff, this type of drama. And it was good to see that come out. I mean, you got – I mean, John Boy was up at 1 o'clock in the morning making a video and it had like – 65,000 views within an hour of posting it at two in the morning for a lot of, like, this is just, everybody's talking about it and that's good for baseball. So those are my thoughts on the Joe Kelly situation. Um, the other one that, that had come up was, I guess, two other things. One, the benches clearing brawl uh, in the midst of COVID restrictions and stuff like that. A lot of, uh, there's, there's actually rules in place that a bench clearing brawl is going to be more, you know, more people are going to be suspended and, uh, all this different stuff because, uh, it, you know, the social distancing and now you have a, whatever, man. Like everybody's tested on a day-to-day -day basis coming into the clubhouse. If like the safest place we're going to be during the entire year is on the field with other players who've been tested. And like, so people complaining about the social distancing COVID stuff, get out of here with that. Um, the other thing is, uh, uh, I'm losing my, my train of thought here. Um, I don't know. I'll come back to it if I, if I pick up on it. But uh, other updates in baseball regarding the COVID and the social distancing. The Marlins situation is <laughs> just, oh, man. Uh, you got a team trapped in a city, uh, in a hotel, having players shipped to different hotels to quarantine and not be able to get back to Miami to, and then the team is going to have to have officials in the city for medical treatment if they need it but then the other team that the rest of the players are going to be back in Miami and then they're going to have to take flights to I don't it is a mess what a mess um <laughs> seemingly MLB had absolutely no no plan, no protocol for people testing positive on the on the road, um, which is absurd if that's actually the case. I mean, from the people I've talked to, it's being just kind of made up on the spot, like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. seems like a lot of things are being made up on the spot also. I mean, we had some issues uh, here with the Reds that, you know, we had a couple players out as precautionary, with precautionary uh, measures because they thought they might be getting a little bit sick. They tested they tested negative once, they tested negative twice, and MLB said they still couldn't come back to the field for another X amount of days. <sighs> it's just, I get it. I get that it's different, and it's, it's tough to foresee everything, but good Lord. I mean, we had six months. We had... I mean, not say we had four months, like whatever, like instead of sitting here making BS proposals and like negotiating through the media and all this crap, like, couldn't you, I mean, you should, someone should have been doing the safety protocol. Someone should have been figuring that stuff out. Something that makes sense. And then the, the other issue is how are you going to make up for like four or five, seven? I don't know how many games are postponed. Like you're not going to have time in the season to make those up. So now are you just going to have like, what if the Marlins are, are like, three wins shy of the division. Like, what if they're right in it? Do you, do you go on winning percentage? Do you go on total number of games? One? Do you, I mean, now you're changing the rules in the middle of the season, so is that fair to everybody? I, I don't know. I, that's just, there seems to be no protocol for it. And then you have the Yankees series, that, so now they're affected, even though they haven't, they weren't involved in this at all. The Phillies are affected. And like, what a mess. What a mess. Uh, MLB needs to get it together on the protocols and player safety and health treatments and stuff like that. Uh, we're out here playing baseball, you know, trying to get a season in, uh, making MLB a lot of money and agreeing to expanded playoffs and restrictions on what we can do and testing protocols and stuff like that. And we, they, there doesn't seem to be any sort of player safety protocol, uh, 
I, no one's thinking. I don't know. It's 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 flabbergasting to me. Um, a lot of people sitting here talking about how the Marlins got it and all that. I don't know the situation behind it, so I'm not going to offer an opinion on it. One thing I am going to say though is, don't blame the players for like if if one player gets it. Like, you can't go blame that player and say he's necessarily being irresponsible. Now, I, I don't know the situation here, so perhaps there were players being irresponsible, but you can't just automatically assume that because one person contracts it that he's being irresponsible. I mean, there's, first off, the possibility that it was a false positive, okay? Uh, there's been some false positives, and there will continue to be false positives. So jumping to the conclusion right away that, oh, said player gets the virus and he was being irresponsible is not the right way to go. Uh, second, like you can, you can pick it up in a lot of different ways. I mean, like if I go to the grocery store cause I need to have food around the house to eat, uh, there's a lot of people that touch a lot of different things at the grocery store. If someone happens to be asymptomatic and sick and they, I, and I pick it up at the grocery, am I to blame for, for doing that? I, so jump for the fans that are jumping to just like pointing the finger and blaming like, Oh, this player, that player being irresponsible and blah, blah, like stop. That's, that ain't it. Don't do that. Um, yeah, that's, the, that's my thought on the Marlins situation. How are they going to handle the playoffs and the standings? How are they going to handle getting the players back to Miami? And, like, it, that doesn't seem – I don't know. I'll be interested to see what the, what the updates are on that as it plays out. But so far, not a great, not a great moment for MLB and uh, in, in how they're handling that, in my opinion. Uh, okay, last baseball update. Before I see you guys again next Thursday, I'm matching up with Clev in Cleveland Wednesday. Mm, I'm so excited. We've already started our banter on Twitter. Uh, just, just good old times, you know. Um, it's going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of adrenaline there, a lot of, a lot of added incentive to go out there and, and play. Um, a little bit more, I think, on my side. One matching up against Clev, who obviously I'm, you know, really close with, and one of my, one of my really good friends. Uh, but also matching up with all my other guys on the on the team, uh, other friends from you know Santana and Lindor, and uh, you know just all the guys, all the guys that are over there. Berto, and I guess Berto's Berto's hurt unfortunately right now, but uh, Mercado and <laughs> just matching up against all these guys is going to be super fun, uh, especially Jose Ramirez. Uh, saying he hit a homer off me in the desert that was a pop-up, like maybe the maybe the neutral center field, maybe. So uh, I told him that the <laughs> the total the total distance of the balls he puts in play against me this year will not equal 500 feet, which is what he claimed he hit the homer in the desert. So that's the number: 500 feet total. All the balls put in play by Jose Ramirez against me will not equal 500 feet this year. That's the, that's the prediction. I can't wait to face him. I can't wait to, ah, man, so much. We've talked so much over the years back and forth about facing each other in live BP and in the desert and live in this and that and the other. And now we get to face each other in a real game and we get to see who, who the real one is, you know? Who's going to get the best of each other? I feel the same way about Lindor. I feel the same way about Santana. Like all the guys there, it's just it's a hyper competitive moment for me, and I, I yeah, <laughs> I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. Matching up with Clev, we're gonna we're gonna have some antics for sure. We're gonna have some antics. We're gonna see if we can get us get ourselves mic'd up for that. I think it'd be hilarious. I got some great got some great cleats for that game. You know, I got. Uh, I got some stuff in the works for that. So must see TV, uh, tune in, Clev and me matching up Reds versus Indians coming up Wednesday. So those are the baseball updates. Time for product of the week. The product of the week is this, the Switch Pod. Uh, the Switch Pod has allowed me to start vlogging and I'm actually really excited about uh, the vlogs. I think they've turned out really well. Um, this is actually a product that I've heard about for a little while. Uh, it's one of the podcasts that I listen to. The, the guy, the host of the podcast is one that helped develop the switch pod. Uh, this is not a sponsored ad by the way. Um, I bought this 
they are not paying me. I have no affiliation with them. I just love the product and what it allows me to do. So it's a little tripod that you can set up like this, but the handle swings around and now you have a little handheld grip that you can vlog with. You can hold out here. It's nice and balanced. It doesn't feel top heavy or anything like that. Got my road mic on top. I can talk to the camera. I can get shots really quick, flick it around. And then when I want to set it on a tripod and film myself, it just switches out to a tripod. So really, really cool product. I've been enjoying it quite a bit and wanted to highlight that because of the currency of the vlog. You know, I got a, I had to get a little, a little setup, a little equipment. Um, this whole setup right here, lens, camera, road mic, switch pod, like 1500 bucks, 2000 bucks. Um, MLB guys, let's get on it. We need more vlogs. If you need help, hit up Momentum, hit me up, reach out. We can help you edit. We can help you film. We can get you set up, whatever. Fans want it. It's good for you. It's good for everybody involved. It helps grow the game, helps grow your brand, helps the fans connect with everybody, helps everything all around. So switch pod, Sony, A6400, a lens, 10 to 18, uh, road mic, Simple. Go with it wherever you want. Uh, all right. Life. Uh, I got a pack. It's, let's see, it's 2.09 right now. I got stretch at 3.50 today, I believe. So I got to be the field by 2.50. I have not packed yet for the road trip. We got a three game road trip coming up. I got a new suitcase, which is great, but I don't remember how to pack for road trips. I don't remember what all I have to bring. I don't remember, I don't know. It's been like a year basically. I mean, 10 months since I've packed for a road trip. And uh, yeah, I don't remember like, do I bring my, do I put my computer stuff in a backpack or my computer bag? Do I carry that on? How do I travel with my blood measuring machine and what all clothes do I need? And I think, you know, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> I, I didn't think I'd forget how to pack for a road trip, but I'm gonna have about 30 minutes by the time I'm done here to pack up for a road trip. Only three days, so if I mess up, it's not gonna to be too not gonna to be too devastating. But uh, yeah, trying to kind of put those old shoes back on in a way and like figure out how to tie them again, so to speak, is uh, is gonna be interesting. I'm probably gonna forget something. Um, I'm gonna say it right now. I'll probably forget my test strips for my blood testing machine because those reside in the fridge, and I'll pack it all up and not put it in my bag and then I'll realize about five hours from now that I didn't do it but I won't have time to come back and get them so I'm saying that right now so that hopefully I don't forget um, but yeah it's like do you travel with your pillow or not I have a lot of things around my apartment that I that I use on a day-to-day -day basis I have my Mark Pro and my Normatec set up for my little recovery suite I got my personal sauna uh, set up I got my red light panel like, do I take any of those things? How can I take those things? Like, how important are they? I probably got to take my Mark Pro and my Normatec, but then, like, those are an extra bag. So, would I travel with five bags for a, for a three-game road trip to Detroit? I don't know. I, these are things I'm going to have to figure out, things I knew last year and I've since forgotten. So, wish me luck on that front. Um, speaking of the Switch Pod earlier and the vlog, the first vlog is out. So, if you're watching this and you have not seen it, I have a little teaser here on my channel and the full version, I think it's 14 minutes or something like that, is going to be on Momentum's channel. So head over there, search Momentum on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed already, do that so you don't miss any of the behind the scenes access that I'll be providing all season. Vlogging has been pretty fun. I'm enjoying it. I got a lot more ideas to come up. I want to feature a lot of my teammates, a lot of the uh, protocol on the road, the hospitality suites, how we get our food, what we're allowed to do, the COVID testing, all that different stuff. So if you want to see what's going on inside the clubhouse, inside uh, the team, stuff like that, tune in to my vlog this season on Momentum's channels. So I wanted to bring that, uh, bring that up. I'm excited for what's going on there. And then uh, Bauer Bites is launching, finally. I mean, we got amazing episodes. We got nine of them. Uh, we got four or five people at each dinner. Um, last year was just one-on-one -on -one conversations, did a lot better this year, making some improvements. We're, uh, we're up in the production quality and the, and the content. We got a lot of really great stories. We got some legends on there, uh, a lot of good baseball talk. So that's launching the fifth on Momentum's channels. Be sure to subscribe over there, like I said, so you don't miss anything. We got a lot of really great content coming out. I'm super excited for the season of Bauer Bites though, because 
there's a lot of really good stories uh, with multiple people chiming in and you get a lot of different perspectives and inside baseball talk and lifestyle and I mean we got I don't I don't know if I can if I can spoil the guest list or not but it's going to be it's going to be pretty good. It's it's a lot of fun. I've seen the episodes. I obviously was at the episodes. Um just it's going to be really great content. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And time for one of my favorite sections, the rant of the week. Yesterday, we played a game against the Cubs. We have bases loaded, nobody out. We're already up by a couple of runs. It's late in the game. And Shogo is at the plate, and he hits a line drive to third base. Chris Bryant dives for it, catches it on a short hop, picks it up, and scrambles to third base to get an out. Shogo's fast, so he knew he wasn't going to throw him out at first. He scrambles to third base to get a force out. So it should be man on first and second, run scores, one out. Except for the fact that the umpire at third, who was behind the play and could not see what actually happened, called it a catch said that he caught the ball in the air. So when he stepped on third, he was doubling the guy off who was running home. And then when he threw it to first, he doubled the guy off that was running to second, and they call it a triple play. Well, upon further review on video, it is abundantly clear that the ball bounces. Like, I mean, no one, Chris didn't even think that he caught it. Our dugout knew he didn't catch it. Their dugout knew he didn't catch it. And the only person in the entire field that thought that he caught it was the third base umpire who had the worst angle to see what actually happened. And we can't review it. Why can we not review it? Because the stupid rules about, oh, it's in front of the umpire and it's between the, it's, it's not a, there's some rule that says that we can't review it. Like, what do we have video for? Like, we started this video review process to get the call right. We, we got to get the call right. That's three outs and zero runs versus one out and one run and the inning continues. Like that can, that is such a huge swing in the game. Now, fortunately we won the game and we are already ahead, but like, what are we doing? Like if we're gonna have video review, it's to get egregious calls correct. It's to overturn bad calls, egregiously bad calls and get them correct. It's not to sit here and hey, hold on. Let me, let me, let me hear, did, was he out? Did his, did his foot pop a millimeter off the base while like, someone's holding a tag on him? Is he out? It, uh, he, well, uh, let's wait 30 more seconds. Okay, our video review guys think it's worth challenging because he's probably out. So now let's wait four minutes for MLB to challenge it. No, that's not what video review was for. It was to get egregiously bad calls wrong. Or, sorry, egregiously bad calls overturned from wrong to right. This was an egregiously bad call and we can't freaking review it? Why? I mean, it would have taken four seconds. The umpires would have ran over there, put the headsets on, like, Hey guys in New York, what's up? And they said, you're wrong. Like it would have been, I mean, it would have been two seconds. We could have gotten the call right and continued on playing baseball. Instead, it's a triple play on a, I, it's just so, it's so ridiculous. So that's my rant of the week, stupid review. Like if you're gonna have review, just have review. If you're not gonna have review, don't have review. But don't have selective review. Oh, we can, we can review the one that's past the umpire, that, but we can't review the one that's right in front of him that he egregiously gets wrong, that he just doesn't call correctly for some reason. It's like, right, like, oh, he's looking at it, so he must be right. Well, it's very obvious on video that he's wrong, but we can't review it because, ah, it's just ridiculous. <sighs> All right, got to settle down a little bit. Coming up uh, on deck this week, we got... Starting Friday versus the Tigers. Uh, always interesting when you start versus a team two times in a row, two times within five days. Uh, one of the most interesting things to me personally about playoffs is when a, a starter goes game one and game four, and then potentially game seven. Like, you only have a certain number of pitches and a certain number of ways to attack a hitter. So they still, they get nine at bats against you, or eight or nine at bats in, in five days, or maybe twelve at bats, and uh, you know ten to twelve at bats over the course of. Uh, over the course of a seven game series. So pitching, pitching against the Tigers is a nice little, you know, two times in a row, it's a nice little proxy for, uh, for playoffs. There's a lot to be learned there. I've had the opportunity to do this like three or four times in my career. Um, and the first couple times didn't go well and I started learning some lessons and watching some other people. So I feel like I have a pretty good beat on what I need to do uh, on how to go about facing a team twice in five days. So excited to see what happens with that on Friday. Um, Excited to see the road protocols with COVID. I know I talked about it earlier about, you know, the, the player safety and not having certain protocols, not thinking about them. But the, the, I mean, there are certain protocols that are in place. There's like a guideline, like a sheet that you're supposed to follow. It, 
Um, so I'll be interested to see what, what that is, what the holes in it are, uh, if there are any, like how inefficient it is or isn't. Like, uh, but that's coming up today. It starts after the game today. So uh, excited to see what that is. I'll be updating you guys via the vlog and uh, probably talk about it a little bit more uh, next week. But excited to see what comes up with that. And excited to catch up on some business stuff. I haven't been able to be super involved with, uh, with my businesses the last week or so with uh, opening day and my first start and a bunch of other stuff that's been going on. So um, road trip. Can't do as much as I can do at home. I'm going to be confined in the hotel, so I finally have some time to think and get some get some stuff done on that, which I'm super excited about. Uh, and yeah, like I was just talking about packing earlier and, and stuff like that. It's just uh, I don't know exactly you know what I'm going to take with me, so I gotta I gotta figure that out. And with that, it is time for this week's week tweets, featuring the weakest tweets that I received this week, and I received some very weak tweets this week. I posted a video of my fake throw to center. Uh, so David Bell came out to take me out of my last outing. I had the ball. I like faked that I was going to throw it to center just to have some fun. Also to throw a little bit of promotion out there for my new shirt, the send it shirt that's available at trevorbauer.com. Went over that last week in this episode. So just all around a little bit of marketing, a little bit of fun, a little bit of jokes. And so I tweeted it out and I said, Oh, like mocking the, the people who've been, you know, after me all the time, like, oh, you threw a temper tantrum on the mound, you're a little crybaby, you blah, 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 you're a whiner, just play baseball, eh, right? So I'm kind of mocking them, I post a video of me faking it, and I get a tweet that says, shut the F up, take your Twitter fingers off, and play your game, goddamn, you're an adult-ass child. So it starts off with a very aggressive tone, and uh, let's break that down a little bit. Starts off very aggressively, Take your Twitter fingers off. Take your Twitter fingers off. Okay, that would, that would assume that I have Twitter fingers. So I would put my Twitter fingers on to tweet. That probably wouldn't work with an iPhone unless they were like, you know, touch sensitive Twitter fingers. So I'm thinking these are like little Twitter, Twitter finger sleeves that you put on, kind of like those, you know, light up sleeves for like magic shows where like you touch them and the light comes on and people don't know you have a sleeve on your finger. Like, I don't know. What, what does a Twitter finger look like? Does anyone have a picture of a Twitter finger? It would be, it would be good to know. I'd, I'd, I'd enjoy knowing what a Twitter finger looks like. So uh, he's assuming that I have Twitter fingers, one, and two, that I have put them on. Uh, and now that I, he's telling me to take them off. So he wants just my regular fingers and he wants me to play my game. Uh, that's what I was doing. I was, I was playing the game in, in the video. I was in uniform, I was on the field playing the game. Uh, and so I'm not sure, I don't know. I don't know what's, I don't know what's, uh, what's, he, what's he meaning there. But um, then he says, you're an adult ass child. So I guess I'm an adult, but I'm also a child. I don't, am I, Usually you would say, you're an adult, stop acting like a child. But he's saying I'm an adult and a child at the same time. Uh, so just, I don't know. I don't know. Just a pretty weak tweet right there. I, I don't know what he's going with. I don't know the purpose of it. It was clearly a joke, and it was all in good heart. It was good, it was good natured, good hearted fun. And he just comes out with that aggressiveness. So, number two. Uh, I tweeted something about my outing. I pitched pretty well. I walked one, struck out 13, gave up one homer, had a good outing. We ended up losing the game. It sucked. And this person says, mechanics are awful. You're falling off the mound. Sad. Better work on your swing. With your arm, you can still play outfield. Mechanics are awful. Not true. I have some of the best mechanics in the league. Factually speaking, you're falling off the mound. I threw it 98, bud. So yeah, I had rotational energy and I spun around my front foot because I threw it hard. And it went exactly where I wanted it to go. So apparently when you throw a ball and nothing hurts and it's really hard and it goes right where you want it to go, eh, my mechanics are awful and that is sad to this person. Better work on your swing. I don't, I don't swing. I know I have a bad swing. So that's a fair chirp, uh, except for with your arm, you can still play outfield. I don't think that if I'm not pitching, I'm going to be a big leaguer. I don't have the skill set, uh, but I'm pretty good at pitching. So 
just a, I don't know, just, just a troll, just trying to get, uh, I don't know what he's trying to say here. Bad chirp. All right. Next one is uh, in response to the, uh, the video of me fake throwing it. And this person says, a mixture of awkward slash cringe slash thinking you're always right slash not funny slash annoying. Mixture of awkward. Uh, I don't think anything about it was awkward. It was a joke. I certainly didn't look awkward doing it. Uh, so I'm not sure who, who thought it was awkward. Cringe, uh, I'm assuming you're talking about me making a joke about me doing something that you think was cringeworthy. Uh, if you can't laugh at yourself and make light of situations that have happened in the past, uh, why, I mean, that's, that's one of the easiest ways to like get over something and to move on and learn from it is like, it's always present in your head. You know, you make some jokes about it, understanding that it was the wrong thing to do. Like it wouldn't be funny to make a joke about something that you've done seven different times and that you know is wrong and you just don't learn from. Like the only way the joke's funny is if you do it one time and then like you make a joke about it, but you know it's wrong, you know? So I don't know what this whole, uh, this cringe thing, thinking you're always right. I don't think I'm always right by any means. I prefer to be surrounded by people that are much smarter than me and I would like to be the dumbest person in the room. It just so turns out that the more often you are the dumbest person in the room, the more you learn. And so the harder it is to become the dumbest person in any given room because you've amassed a much greater knowledge base than a lot of people. And that just so happens to be the case. Like when it comes to pitching, I'm generally smarter than the vast majority of people I'm around. I would love to be the dumbest person in the room and learn a lot. And I try to put myself in those situations. I consult with people who know much more about strength training than I do, mental game than I do, biomechanics than I do, pitch design. Like, but it's hard to find these people at this point because I've learned a lot. So I don't think I'm always right. I prefer to be wrong because that's how you learn. But like, when you're right, you're right. So not sure if that's, I don't know what, I don't know. Not funny. Uh, yeah, it was funny. So that's just wrong. A lot of people thought it was funny. Uh, the vast majority of people thought it was funny and annoying. If you're annoyed by the fact that I have a personality and make jokes that are funny to a lot of people and have a good time playing the game, then you're annoying to whoever sent this tweet out. Uh, so just a bad, bad overall, just desperate, looking for attention, throwing out a lot of things, probably an Astros fan. And then the last one, you are a whopping 10 games over 500 with a four plus career ERA. Why do you think anyone cares? Well, first off, because a lot of people do care. Uh, I'm one of the more followed and engaged with athletes in baseball. So by those metrics, yeah, a lot of people care. Uh, two, a whopping 10 games over 500 means that I'm a better than average pitcher in a stat that doesn't mean anything. Like pitcher wins don't mean anything. So with a career four plus ERA, all right, sure, you can chirp about that. For the last three years, I've been one of the top 10 pitchers in the league. I had two bad months with Cincinnati. And other than that, like I was a top five pitcher in the league. So if you wanna look at middle of 2017 to where we are now, you might wanna reevaluate what you're saying there. Uh, why do you think anyone cares? Because I'm a person as well as an athlete. So I'm allowed to have an opinion. Sorry that that bothers you, Mr. Old, you know, get off my lawn guy. Uh, but athletes are people too. And we can talk just like you tweeting me. I'm supposed to read your tweet and care about it. Uh, and clearly I cared about it in some way because I'm talking about it right now. Just like you clearly cared about what I had to say because you tweeted me. So this whole like, oh, why do you think anyone cares? Like, well, clearly you care. So that's one. And because a lot of people respond to me, that's two. And because I'm allowed to have an opinion and because a lot of people follow me, I have like 290,000 followers on Twitter. So 290,000 followers seem to care what I have to say, at least in some way, you know? Uh, so just an overall, a really weak tweet, you know, coming, there's a lot of things you can come at me for that would be valid. Uh, Clev is, is pretty good about that, if anyone's been following the Twitter exchange we've had today. Uh, and there's a lot of things you can come at me that are, come at me for that are valid. But uh, my ERA, first off, being a winning pitcher, and uh, my ERA being high, which by the way, my ERA the last, past like five seasons has been well above league average, or like well, well better than league average. Uh, so, I'm an above average pitcher in the wind column, above average pitcher in ERA. Why do I think anyone cares when I have a lot of followers and I'm one of the most engaged with and followed athletes in baseball? So, terrible tweet. Terrible, terrible, terrible tweet. 
But that's it. That's all for today. Those are the weakest tweets that I could find this week. Uh, I got to pack because it is now, what time is it now? It is now 2.30 and I need to leave here in about 20 minutes uh, and I haven't packed anything yet. So I'll see you guys later.